I, sw- I, I want to come on here and, and be like furious and angry, but I swear to God, I've reached a, a level of acceptance now. I'm not surprised in any way, shape or form by what I've just seen there against Southampton. Manchester United won, Southampton won. Another game where Manchester United control looked really good in the first half. Go in at half time, winning, come out in the second half with a stinking attitude and we get punished for it again. The third game in a row that's finished 1-1. The third game in a row where Manchester United have dominated the first half but don't come away with the three points or the result. We are a club that is broken at the absolute core from the Glazers right down to the players. This isn't me pointing the fingers at a board. This is me pointing the fingers firmly at those players because there is absolutely no way that at halftime, Ralph Rangney doesn't take those players in and go, you know what happened? Only a few days ago against Burnley, we were in this position. Make sure it does not happen again. That would have been the half. It would have been a very easy halftime team talk for Ragnick to have after another impressive first half. But again, the players came out and again, we conceded. And then what, the 47th, 48th minute? Unbelievable. Luke Shaw for both of those goals against Burnley and against Southampton, two yards behind the back line. What are you doing, Luke? Keep every- keeping everyone on side. It staggers me. It, it, as I said, it, it staggers me and it doesn't stagger me now. I don't, know, I, I don't know about you, but I've reached a bit of a level of acceptance after that game there, after that second half there, after Groundhog Day, after Deja Vu, after the copy and paste of the last few games from Manchester United. We've seen it all before and we've just seen it again there. And when, when things happen once or twice in life, you can call it an anomaly if it happens once. You can call it a bit of a bad run if it happens twice. If it happens three times in a row, it's a habit. Manchester United now have made this the norm. And I don't want to accept it, but I don't know how it changes. We can take a look here if you want. I can speak about how good Jaden Sancho was in that first half. I want to. That's two or three games now where I've really wanted to focus on how good, say, Jaden Sancho has been. But it's been overshadowed by the anonymity of Cristiano Ronaldo. I think I'm going to have to do a separate video about Cristiano Ronaldo later today. There is no... Look, I have very much put Cristiano Ronaldo in the Zlatan Ibrahimovic camp. When Zlatan came to United, you sort of forgave him for a large parts of the games where you were so frustrated watching Ibrahimovic because he came up with the goals. Right now, the goals are dried up for Ronaldo and you're realising that we're playing with 10 men when he's there. He's a yard short. His finishing is off. His confidence is off. He's dropping really deep to try and impact the game because he can't do it with goals. And then we don't have a striker. Uh, Jesus Christ, ladies and gents, I don't know what to say about this game that you aren't already thinking or aren't already feeling. This isn't on Ralph Ragnick. This isn't on the formation. This isn't on the tactics. This is a simple, very simple mental approach to the game. Manchester United have almost got this... Uh, I, I, this is what I firmly believe about our mentality. The players, they play well when they're comfortable. They play well when, they, you know, when, when the chips aren't down. When they haven't got that killer instinct anymore. They're happy to go 1-0 up. But as soon as they go 1-0 up, instead of the mentality going on to the second goal, the mentality goes into putting it into park, put it into neutral. Let's just keep it like that. We don't need to get that second goal. It just reeks of complacency. It reeks of uh, the wrong sort of attitude that keeps continuously getting punished. It's happened three times now. There Against Middlesbrough, we got knocked out of the FA Cup. Against Burnley, we dropped two points. Against bottom of the Premier League, Burnley. And here against, I would say, a decent Southampton team, the hardest of the three games there for sure. Southampton probably good for their point. But they they shouldn't have been. They didn't need to be if we kept our foot on the gas. If we came out in that second half like we came out in that first half, that would not have been the result in that game. We are the architects of our own downfall. And I do not understand how this is being allowed to continue from game to game to game to game. No doubt we're going to hear Captain Harry Maguire coming out and saying, we're going to fight. We're going to... They won't do... In fact, they won't do that anymore. They've seen the backlash from these... These wafer-thin apologies. These hollow apologies that... If, if it's... A, the reason I'm saying it's hollow is because the same thing happens the next game. This is why fans are pissed off. This is why fans are feeling so disconnected with this team. As I said, I've, I've, I've reached a level of acceptance now that I don't want to have reached, but I have reached. I don't know how this now changes. 
Go and do that against Atletico Madrid and see what happens. Atletico Madrid are really, they're sort of, they're not the Atletico Madrid of a few years ago. They got to, got to the Champions League final. I'll put it, I'll say that much. But we're looking at the, uh, we're all looking at the uh, the Champions League as, maybe we get Champions League Ronaldo back. That Ronaldo there, pub team Ronaldo. I don't know what Ronaldo that is, but he looks 37. I'll tell you that. He looks a yard short in every single aspect of the game right now. And as I said, to go back to the comparison to Zlatan, Zlatan was that player that you watch. He got frustrated with how he was impacting the whole game, but he came up with the goods time and time again. He kept scoring goals. So you couldn't say much about Ibrahimovic. Right now, you can say a hell of a lot about Cristiano Ronaldo, and I'm going to do that in a separate video. I'm so annoyed that I can't be happy about Jaden Sancho's performance again. Like him down the left, great. I love watching Sancho at the moment. He's got that swagger, that, that confidence to run at a player. Brilliant. Dallo in the first half, I thought his vertical passes over the top to Rashford. I thought he's he showed exactly why wan is being kept out of the team. But the reality is, is it's all irrelevant. It's all pointless to talk about the positives we're seeing from, I don't know, from Varane, if you want to, from Pogba, who's, if, mate, if we had this sort of Paul Pogba every single time when he's played for United, my God, we wouldn't even, he would have signed the contract ages ago. He looks incredible. Can we just have Shop window pop, Paul, Paul Pogba. Seriously. But the second half drop-off, man. Wow. It is. It's like a virus. It's, it's a guarantee now. Had back Manchester United to be winning at halftime. And for Manchester United to draw the game, he would have made plenty of money in the last few games. It's a repeatable pattern. It's, it's, it's there. It's there. It's there. The same thing keeps happening. And nobody is changing it. What leader in that team is, is, is forcing the change? Nobody, because the same things happened three times. And I'm not just pointing my finger at Harry Maguire here. Although I don't really think he should have started today. I mean, did he play well? No, he didn't play well. Did him and Luke, and Luke Shaw look massively exposed against Southampton every time they went forward? Yes, they did, for sure. And then Luke Shaw in particular, at fault for the goal, and all of Southampton's danger came down the our right-hand side, where he should be defending. I don't know what he was doing there today, but it was really poor from Luke Shaw. But every single one of these players, man, why is there not someone at half-time going in there and being pissed off and being angry? Start throwing some punches. Start throwing some boots. Start shoving other players against the wall if you really gave a crap. But the reality is, do they? Do they? Will they? I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore. It feels like I'm more pissed off than any one of those players are. I feel you're more pissed off than any one of those players are going into that dressing room now after that game for our third consecutive one-all draw. Our third consecutive game where we've dominated the first half of football. Looked like a proper team under Ralph Ragnick. Proper good football. Great goal. Looked like we could have had finishing there. Was poor again. Ronaldo again. Rashford again. Chances in the first half. Second half. Woof completely and utterly different team. Like with match fix in the second halves. I don't know what to say anymore that I haven't already said in the last few uh, match reactions. We saw it against Middlesbrough and it was a big worry when that happened against a championship team. We saw it against Burnley and we were like, we've just seen that. How, how are United doing that again? Against bottom of the league, Burnley. You think, all right, we'll do it against Southampton. You think they've had a good result against, against Spurs, but don't worry, we'll do it. The same thing has happened again. Three times in a row. Let's probably predict the fourth time in a row against Brighton on Tuesday. Four points dropped in the Premier League in our last two games. In two games, we should have easily, comfortably cruised to six points. Top forwards, I would say, is probably out of our reach this season, given the patterns and the habits that we're now seeing. But the bigger and, and wider issue and the problem here is not about the result. What is this attitude? Where is it coming from? Is it everywhere? Is it just infected everybody? Why are there not more fighters? Why are there not more people that are more angry? Why are there not more players that are angry with that performance? As I said, I think the players have started to accept it, and I feel like I've started to accept it as a fan. I don't know how this changes. I don't know where the turn comes from. I don't think it's uh, Ralph Ragnick's fault. I think the football is fine in terms of the, the, the tactics, the formation, and our first halves all show me incremental improvements under Ragnick that are consistently there on game on game. But when it comes to that attitude, that's just down to the players as individuals and as a team. And right now, we don't have enough individuals to affect that overall team attitude. That's the problem. Even if there are a good few, a, a good a few good eggs in there, and there are, overall that team attitude is dragging us under. 
and we're drowning right now. I don't know where we turn now. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Manchester United for the third game in a row, drawing one all. And as I said from the title of the video, it seems like the club is just the, it's rotten. The mentality, it's infested. United have got gangrene.